Hi, and welcome to this Latino Ministry for Christ channel. Before we proceed to the reflection you have come to see, I want to invite you to subscribe to the channel, to activate the bell, to give us a like, to share this video, and to leave your comments. This will allow the algorithms to promote the reflections so that more people may be reached with the gospel. God bless you. In the reflection for today, Jesus Christ, the most powerful name that exists. When the 1960s ended, San Francisco Hyde Ashbury District reverted to high rent, and many hippies moved down the coast to Santa Cruz. They had children and got married too, though in no particular sequence. But they didn't name their children Melissa or Brett. People in the mountains around Santa Cruz grew accustomed to their children playing frisbee with little time warp or spring fever. And eventually, Moonbeam, Earth, Love, and Precious Promise all ended up in public school. That's when the kindergarten teachers first met Fruit Stand. Every fall, according to tradition, parents bravely apply name tags to their children kiss them goodbye, and send them off to school on the bus. So it was for fruit stand. The teachers thought a boy's name was odd, but they tried to make the best of it. Would you like to play with the blocks fruit stand, they offer? And later, fruit stand, how about a snack? He accepted hesitantly. By the end of the day, his name didn't seem much odder than Heather or Sunrise. At dismissal time, the teacher led the children out to the buses. Fruit stand, do you know which one is your bus? He didn't answer. That wasn't strange. He hadn't answered them all day. Lots of children are shy on the first day of school. It didn't matter. The teacher had instructed the parents to write the name of their children's bus stops on the reverse side of their name tags. The teacher simply turned over the tag there, neatly printed, was the word Anthony. The value and proper use of a name is important. In today's reflection, speaking of names, we read the scriptures in the letter to the Philippians and says, Who being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant. Being made in human likeness and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name. Philippians chapter 2 verses 6 to 9. Shakespeare, one of the greatest icons of world literature, asked the question, what's in a name? That is a good question, don't you think? Did you know that until about 1100 AD, most people only had one name? It was only beginning around the year 1100 that people began to speak of surnames or middle names. The Bible names people and often identifies them by their relationship or by heritage. For example, in the Bible it is Abraham the son of Terah, Moses the son of Amram, Joshua the son of Nun, and David the son of Jesse. In the culture in which Jesus lived and the culture in which Jesus was named, names had a meaning. In other words, a child had to leave the name that was given to him. Back then, the names had rich and meaningful significance. 
names don't really mean much to most people today. For example, there are thousands and thousands of Jim Smith in the United States of America. Don't get me wrong, it is a good name, but it's a very common name. Did you know that there is a Jim Smith Club in the United States with more than 50,000 registered club members? Every year, they meet in Las Vegas, Nevada, and one of the highlights of the Jim Smith Convention is a softball in which all the participants are named Jim Smith. Even the umpires are Jim Smith. They have a lot of fun and amusement announcing each batter by saying, and now coming to the plate is Jim Smith. And of course, every batter is Jim Smith, and every fielder is Jim Smith. True story. As Christians, we will never get tired of speaking the name of Jesus, because it is the most important name, the cream, the essence, and the fundamental purpose of the Holy Scriptures, by whom and for whom all things exist in our visible and invisible created universe. He is the center and the core of the gospel, and the bodily manifestation of God's love for humanity. As such, He should be the center of our worship and reason for our gratitude to the infinite grace and goodness of God the Father. His name represents the power and authority of the Supreme Creator. The name of Jesus is the most powerful name that exists in the heavens and the earth. God gave Jesus the name that is above all names. Why is this name so powerful? It is because of the sacrifice He made by living a perfect life, dying as a sinner, and rising from the dead victorious. Jesus opened a way for all humanity to be saved and reconciled to God the Father. Did you know or are aware of the power that is contained in the name of Jesus Christ? Many Christians ignore the power that this name carries, specifically when faced with evil manifestation or demonic possession. If you find yourself in the middle of such a situation, invoking the name of Jesus Christ make any evil force flee. This is key for the Christian. But many ignore this reality. Look at what his disciples expressed. Whoever listens to you, listens to me. Whoever rejects you, rejects me. But whoever rejects me, rejects him who sent me. The seventy-two returned with joy and said, Lord, even the demons submit to us in your name. Gospel of Luke, chapter 10, verses 16 to 17. That same power is available to each of us who cried out to Christ in our hearts. That is the most powerful name that has ever existed and will ever exist in eternity. We have such a powerful weapon and we don't make use of it. The Lord Jesus told His disciples according to the Gospel of Mark, chapter 16, go into the world and preach the good news to everyone. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved but whoever refuses to believe will be condemned. These miraculous signs will accompany those who believe. They will cast out demons in my name and speak new languages. The Hebrew word that describes Christ is Mashiach, or as we know it, Messiah. So Christ is more of a title than a name, although the Bible uses it both ways. For example, the Bible often referred to Jesus by name as Jesus Christ, just as we do in modern usage. When Jesus asked his disciples who they thought he was, Peter replied, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God, as per Matthew chapter 16 and verse 16. In the questioning of Jesus by the Jews, just before his crucifixion, the high priest asked, I charged you under oath by the living God, tell us if you are the Messiah, the Son of God, in Matthew chapter 26, verse 63. 
And Luke records that on one occasion when Jesus cast demons out of an individual, the demons screamed, You are the Son of God. But he rebuked them and would not allow them to speak because they knew he was the Messiah. Luke chapter 4 and verse 4. The name Christ comes from the Greek word Christos, which literally means anointed one. The word is derived from the Greek verb Creo, which means to anoint. In the Greek Septuagint, Christos was used to translate the Hebrew word Mashiach or Messiah, which means one who is anointed. I want to repeat myself with this important fact. If on any occasion you find yourself under the terror of a diabolical presence or before a demonic possession, something that is in Latin America and the Caribbean more common than here in North America. I personally have been an eyewitness to that and experienced it firsthand. Invoke Call the powerful name of Jesus and in his name rebuke the evil spirit or the demonic presence and you will see how the power of the name of Christ drives away that threat. Because any demonic presence will flee when you invoke the name of Jesus Christ. Proclaim it with your lips and it will flee. That is guaranteed and is promised by our Lord and Savior Jesus. But I want you to know something very, very important and critical. Your heart must be seeking to do God's will. By this, I don't mean that you have to be without errors, mistakes, or a flawless saint. You can never achieve that as a human being. What I mean by that is that every day face your temptations fighting to do His will, and that when you fail, ask God's forgiveness and then continue in the fight. What I tell you is very important because if you are rejecting Christ in your heart and not subjecting yourself to the will of God, and you use the name of Christ only as a weapon, an amulet, or a power without even trying to do His will and just trying to play the role of an exorcist? The result could be what happened to the seven sons of the prince of the priest in the story written in the book of Acts that tells us like this. Some Jews who went around driving out evil spirits tried to invoke the name of the Lord Jesus over those who were demon-possessed. They would say, in the name of Jesus, whom Paul preaches, I command you to come out. Seven sons of Seba, a Jewish chief priest, were doing this. One day the evil spirit answered them, Jesus I know, and Paul I know about, but who are you? Then the man who had the evil spirit jumped on them and overpowered them. He gave them such a beating that they ran out of the house naked and bleeding. Book of Acts chapter 19 verses from 13 to 16. The name of Jesus is synonymous of victory for the Christian. In the mighty name of Jesus, the sick were healed, the invalid walked, the blind gained sight, the demons feared and obeyed, the grave could not hold him, death could not stop him. The veil was torn before his sacrifice. He silenced the boasting of sin and the grave. The heavens today roar the praise of his glory and his power. Because he rose again, his name has no equal or rival. Now and forever he reigns majestically because his is the kingdom, the glory, and because his is the name above all names that have been and will ever be. Nothing in the created world compares to the power that was given to the Son of God. He has power over life and death, over our past, our present, and our future. The Apostle Paul in the letter to the Romans chapter 10 and verse 13 tells us, For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. My dear friend and brother, we are before the most powerful name that has ever existed or that will exist in eternity. 
Our life is a very tiny speck of dust in creation, but His unmeasurable love has given us unparalleled value before the rest of creation. The loving Lord did not want heaven without us. He came to offer us a life by His side if only today you open your heart to Him and receive Him as your Savior. Let us seek to honor His name with a life of dedication and obedience. Our gracious and most powerful God, creation shows us without a doubt the greatness of your power, your love, your grace, and your goodness. That even being rebellious, disobedient, and proud, you open a way through the powerful and unequal name of Jesus Christ, your Son. You offered us a place in your heavenly kingdom. Your love is without an equal and your faithfulness is unmatched. Lord, break in us the ties that enslave us to this world and help us to be grateful to the show of your love and mercy. We come before your presence to beg you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, to forgive us. Amen.